loved the ultimate scripture, the purpose of zikr, mantras, recitations, is to bring awareness into you. An awareness of what is this awareness that we want to bring into ourselves. We learn in the scriptures that God created the entire human humanity. God created everyone. If God created everyone, then why there is conflict? What we understand, what we are taught, what we are told, and what we understand, there is a wide gap between the two. We are told honesty is the best policy, and when something is a policy that is incorrect, this statement is incorrect. Honesty is the best policy. Honesty is not a policy. Policy means like an economic policy, political policy, and treaties that go on changing according to circumstance and situation. But if honesty is your nature, then it is not going to change. Under all circumstances and situation, it becomes your nature. We do zikr, we do things like these, but when actual time comes in, we forget all these scriptural injunctions. If the awareness is there that we are all made out of one common element, water, all the people who are there in this meditation session, they all need water for their survival. They all need air for their survival. The five basic elements each one of us need. We are made out of the same stuff. The only difference is the outer. Each computer system works on internet facility but the brands may be different. But the principle on which these different computers, different phone systems work, remains the same. But their providers may be different. The outer appearances may be different. If this awareness comes to you that we are part of synergistic harmony, we are all seen, carry the same spark within us. Whether you take a cigarette lighter or a matchbox or any other device, the light that comes in remains the same. The purpose of all zikr recitations is to bring this awareness. And if that awareness comes in, then There is no need for that recitation or zikr. Zikr or recitation is a vehicle that takes you to your destination, that invokes the heart center, which is one common element in all of us. It brings awareness into us, and awareness is neither Hindu, Muslim, or Christian. Love is not Hindu, Muslim or Christian or German or American or Indian. It is one energy that con continues to flow. It is an overflowing silence, a joy, a peace and blissfulness between two persons. And this is what is very important. And for this, some may need a zikr or recitation or mantra. If you can directly attain to this state, then you do not need the zikr 
love is the only scripture that god wrote indeed love is the only scripture that is unwritten and god gave you this scripture as unseen but realized truth and one thing that he did that he hid this scripture deep within you that hidden secret it was decided that if this is given to man so easily then everyone can attain to godliness where should be hide it some said hide it on the mountain others said hide it in the deep in the ocean man will not find it but it is still it is said that if you hide it on the mountain one day someone will discover it if you hide it deep within the ocean still someone will find it so it was decided let it be hidden deep within man we search things all around we search god we go from place to place in search of god but we never search within us it is like the deer that is getting the smell of a very is good smell but he doesn't know where this smell is coming from one thing is certain he hide the entire scripture deep within you and that is the problem that you look all around but you do not look within you the day you are capable of discovering the seed of this scripture within your spiritual journey begins however by nature man seeks god all around and misses deep within even when his search somehow begins within he finds himself unable to decipher all that is written in this scripture nothing seems to be seen written yet still everything is written but written in a different language you have to learn the art of hearing the unheard and see the unseen this is symbolic when holy prophet came in the company of allah subhanahu wa taala he was asked to read he was unable to read and nothing was seen love is the texture that has given the form and shape to my being and to your being love is the only message that flows from the heart from a master to the seeker love is the communion it is oneness it is awareness it is harmony both within and without it is this let it be your quality happiness under all circumstances and situations harmony in your thoughts emotions in your thoughts and actions is important love is your color and the climate love is the only religion that god has given to you all else is just unnecessary and therefore can be discarded i have discarded all the other outer religions the only religion that i cherish is love all else is nothing but dreams a mental game love is the only substantial thing in life and all else is illusion let love grow in and then one day you will hear my footsteps i will be growing on in my own accord if you miss love you will miss me and all then life will be a misery and despair in the most sublime and sacred way the scripture reveals the secrets there is no way to god without love says the scripture
There is nothing more sublime than love. God can be forgotten but not love. If love is remembered, God will happen. As a consequence, it happens as a consequence. God is the fragrance of love and nothing else. In fact, there is no God but only Godliness. There is no person like God anywhere. Drop all childish attitudes. Never go on searching for a father. Divineness is God. Divineness is God is no more. Seek me as and through love. Love is my synonym. When I say divineness is, I mean whatsoever is, is full of God. The entire creation is full of godliness. Only you need eyes to see this. The green of the trees, the red of the flowers, the golden glow of the rising sun, all are divine. And the purpose of all the austerities, zikr or anything that we do is to bring this awareness and this is awareness that the green of the trees, the red of the flowers, the golden glow of the rising sun all are divine, all manifest divineness. A crow crying, a bird on the wing, a child giggling and a dog barking, all is divine. Everyone is living in their nature, but not man. Dogs do not imitate the others, only parrots imitate others. You may hear a parrot barking like a dog, mowing like a cow, or things like these. A child, a crow crying, a bird on the wing, a child giggling, and a dog barking, all is divine. Nothing else exists. The moment you feel this, love attains a new meaning. Love then gives birth. Love will then give birth to real you, the authentic, the original. The moment you ask where is God, you have raised the wrong question. Because God cannot be indicated anywhere. The moment you feel this, love attains a new meaning. Love then will give birth to the real you. The moment you ask, where is God? You have raised the wrong question. God cannot be indicated anywhere. He is not in any particular direction. He is not a particular thing either. He is not a particular being. It is universality. It is said God is creator, but it would be better to say God is the process of creation. That process that creates new things, it's God. God is the process of creation. God is totality, hidden in the entire creation. Ask where God is not. Only then you have asked the right question. One of the Hindu scriptures, Ishopanisha, begins with a beautiful sutra. To say that it is a Hindu scripture is erroneous, but it is written in a language that is known as the language of the Hindu scriptures. Truth is not Hindu, Muslim or Christian, it is cosmic. It begins, the entire cosmos is permeated by ever-expanding consciousness or Isha. And now Isha is the name given to Jesus in India called Isha Masih. Entire cosmos is permeated by ever-expanding consciousness of Isha, referring to God. It is your realization now. And once you have realized this, 
you can enjoy the fruits of the entire cosmos. Then the entire cosmos belongs to you and you belong to the whole. That is the meaning of another Hindu mantra, Purnamada, Purnamidam, Purnat, Purnamudachati. Everything comes from the totality and dissolves into totality. This is total, that is total. If you take the water in a spoon, it is total because it has the quality of the water. Quality to quench your thirst. The chemical structure is the same. If you take water in a cup or a glass of glass or in a bucket, it has the same quality. It is total. Its totality has nothing to do with the quantity. So that is why it is important. Such are the secrets as contained in the eternal scripture of love. Therefore, for that right question and understanding, you will have to prepare the soil of your awareness. If you are not in love, you have not yet been overwhelmed by the secret of love. Then what can you know about God? Even you, the false identity, have no real existence. But I was thinking that what should I give you today? Because this is the dawn of new awakening. And when love springs forth from the deepest core, that is the dawn of new awakening. What is the way to know the secrets of these scriptures? You will have to begin this journey through introspection. Introspection is the first step. This is the process of going into your being. As the process continues, you will realize that you are knocking the door of meditation. Introspection is the prelude to meditation. And from where did you get the idea that love and meditation are different polarities? Love and meditation are two wings of the being. It simply means you neither know what love is, nor do you know what meditation is. And without knowing, you are disturbed by the question. To you, love and meditation seems to be opposite polarities. I wonder where did you get that idea? If love and meditation are opposite polarities, then nothing in this world can be close to any other thing. But I know all the old religions have also been under the same misconception. The meditators have been escaping to the mountains to avoid love. And lovers never bothered about meditation because they knew that if they meditated, their love life will be finished. It has been one of the oldest fallacies humanity has lived with. Just as you cannot walk on one feet, a bird cannot fly on one wing, you require two feet to walk, two wings to fly. So too, you need love and meditation as two wings to continue. Love is an overflowing silence, a joy, a peace and blissfulness between two persons. But because there are two persons, sometimes they never match. Meditation is the same experience of silence and peace, but alone. When you experience blissfulness together in the company of the other person, then it is love. When you experience the same silence and blissfulness, alone it is meditation. In love, the other presence is important. In meditation, the other presence is not needed, but the outcome remains the same. Even if two meditators are in love, 
then things come to the highest peak. If one meditator can reach to a certain peak in his blissfulness or silence, two meditators who love one another can become an immense support to each other's transcendence into the unknown. Their love can become nourishment to their meditation and vice versa. Categorically, I differ from all the religions of the past. They have made love and meditation polarities, parallel lines which meet nowhere. And it happens, and if it happens, then you will never be able to live this scripture of love. And unless you live it, you will not blossom. Your being will not blossom. A man of meditation is bound to understand love and know the art of immense love. All his anger is gone, hate is gone, there is no more possessiveness. If he cannot love, then who else can love? And a man of love can go deepest in meditation because love is our highest quality, our purest self, our purest, the perfect soul. If two singing hearts cannot meet in deep meditation, then no other meeting is possible. Two instruments, two separate instruments, synchronized together, playing the same tune. In fact, there is no need to escape to the mountains to meditate or learn the first lessons in love. Also in the whole world, people without meditation love each other and there is no love. But their love does not bring bliss into their life. On the contrary, creates hell, misery, despair. They are known as intimate enemies. Intimate enemies who have decided to live together. If love is the scripture God wrote for you, he also created the technique of meditation to feel, live and explore the secrets of the scripture of love. My own understanding is that as long as love and meditation are almost two sides of the same coin, we can cannot create a new man, the new humanity, the new world. The two have to be the same. Never say love and meditation are opposite polarities. This is a lie propagated by the priests down the ages. It has reduced lovers into miserable lives and meditators into juiceless descent. I want your life to be a garden full of flowers, fruits and juices. There is no question of how to create a loving meditative relationship. People who gather around a living Buddha, a living master, are already living. At least they are making an effort for the first time in the whole history of man to bring love and meditation as two sides of the same experience. Why should love disturb meditation? It never does. Indeed, neither of the two can disturb one another. Love gives you the right atmosphere and right soil to meditate. And meditation gives you the right fragrance for love to become a treasure, a glory, a benediction. Know this as the essence of the scripture of love. Love gives you the right atmosphere and right soil to meditate. And what does meditation do? 
Meditation gives you the right fragrance for love to become a treasure, a glory, a benediction. Know this as the essence of the scripture of love. The only scripture that was given to you.